<laughs> hey man, you Edomites are hilarious. All right. So first and foremost, I want to give all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect. To you, I say greetings. All right. Um. So I was going over this. Uh, I was just going through my YouTube, uh, like subscriptions, and uh, seeing what brothers have been putting up. And, you know, uh, I subscribe to a couple of the random things, like you know, like Dabu Seven, uh, alternative media. You know, this is alternative media TV that you're seeing right now on the screen. All right, and so they are. They made a, you know, they always go off. They still eat mites. Um, they made a thing called how to profit with gold and silver. All right, and so you know, if you if you ever watch these people's websites and there are things they're just putting up promotions for like uh bug out bags and uh different uh food and water sources to have when things when shit hits the fan you know things like that man but they that's how you know that they are void of light and that they are void of the scriptures so i was about to start with zephaniah but let me get isaiah this is isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. All right. So there is no light in these people that are talking about how to make how to profit from silver and gold. And, you know, if you look at the beginning of this video, I didn't get the chance. to. I didn't even watch the whole thing. You know, I watched like a couple minutes in and I saw what they were talking about. You know, they're talking about how uh, basically the time of martial law, when the economy collapses, uh, what are you going to do? to have funds and they're telling people to uh invest in gold and silver and to profit off of these things because the cash is about to be a cash in society and the cash the dollar is gonna uh be uh destroyed soon which is true all right but uh, you have to understand the things that are coming of the lord all right this, uh, so i started this is zephaniah 1 and 14 through 18 the great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Okay, so the the voice, the great day of the Lord is, is near, man. All right. The day of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, whom you ignorantly call God and whom you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. It is near. It is not in another generation, in another lifetime. It is near, man. And all of these people, these heathens, these two thirds shall witness the great power of our Lord in heaven. And it hasted greatly. All right. Verse 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. This is the day of who you ignorantly call God, man. So you, all these people are prepping, uh, making these, making their meal plans and they're uh, storing up their gold and silver. All right, the day of the Lord is a day of wrath, man. No matter how much gold and silver you try to hide and store up, all right, it's going to be a day of wrath where people are going to be set loose and killing and murdering, all right? And the absolute day when he returns, there's going to be 200 million missiles to hit America and blow it completely off the face of the earth. And also, it says, uh, of trouble and distress, a, th a darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. So you have to understand that not only is it going to be spiritually dark because of all the things that are coming upon this place, but it's also going to be literally dark because the, the chariots of the Lord are going to blot out the skies, man. All right. And the coming of the of the heavenly father is going to be much treachery, much destruction, much bloodshed, much chaos. All right. Uh, verse 16, a day of the trumpet and alarmed against the fence cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. So it's going to be great death as, fle as, uh, as their flesh as dung. Going to be uh, dead bodies everywhere, man. All right. These are the things that the Lord has prophesied unto the earth. That's what's going to happen in these last days through his men. OK, um, so going up to verse 18. It says, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. 
All right. So it says neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. So this video but from AMTV that says how to profit with gold and silver, obviously gold and silver can be a profitable thing, you know, in this society. It's a form of money. And, uh, you know, let me go to uh, Ecclesiastes real quick. It's a form of money. So obviously it has its benefits. But there's the, the Lord is prophesying. It's telling a time where it's not going to be helpful for people. All right, let me get, uh, this is Ecclesiastes 7 and 12. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. All right. So the Lord said he's going to, uh, the wis wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But wisdom is greater than money, man. All right. And it giveth to them that have it. So those who have life and those that are seeking after life are the children of Israel the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, all right? So that wisdom is what's going to truly carry you throughout all of these treacherous times and not uh, money, man, okay? Because the money now that people are using, which is why it's going to collapse, is because the money that we're using are uh, FRNs, Federal Reserve Notes, which is fiat money. It's not a real source of income, you know? You can't base true wealth off of uh, a paper product, is uh the dollar is made out of uh cotton and paper you know you can't base something off of that so uh that's where they're going to try to kick in to say if you have the silver or the gold to be the standard for selling and buying and purchasing but of course we're going to know that the market of beasts is going to take place as well which is the rfid chip salakia but it says neither their gold, going back to Zephaniah 1 and 18, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. So, you know, Edomites like to store up silver, like to store up gold. They like to have money, like to have bricks. They like to have things that the uh, uh, nation of Israel does not possess. All right. How many how many Jakes, you know, have a gold, a gold bar sitting in their house? All right. Not many. Even with our jewelry, you still can't compare it to that gold, man. But they're not going to be able. So all these people now taking their stock money. And they're buying uh, brick uh, bricks of gold. That's not going to be able to deliver you. All right. They can't keep you safe. Because the, the, the judgment of the Lord is going to come from every angle, man. It's not going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, if you got some gold, you can make it. If you got uh, this way, you can make it. It's not going to be like that. All right. Let me get uh, Amos 5. Because a lot of people think they're going to be able to uh, run away from the judgment of the Lord. This is Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, for what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. All right, the day of the Lord is dark. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, man, as we just read in Zephaniah 1 and 18. 1 and uh, 14. It says, uh, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and the serpent bit him. All right. So the, no matter where you go, there's going to be judgment. There's going to be death. There's going to be wrath. Are you, can you, uh, you fleeing from a lion? You like, OK, I, you ran into a lion. You escaped them. And then a bear met you, man. All right. So you're, you're the, the, the odds that you got away from the lion was slim to none. Now you ran into a bear and hey, you're going to die, man. All right. You go into your house. You think you're comfortable. All right. You leaned on the wall and a serpent bites you, man. It's no escaping the death of, of the Lord, man. It says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. All right. So it's going to be a dark, dark day for you people, man. All right. You you two thirds of the nation of Israel, you uh, you heathen, you so-called white people, so-called Arab people, so-called Asian people. All right. All of you different nations that are not of the nation of Israel, you have a treacherous destruction coming unto you. So going back to Zephaniah 1 and 18. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. So what's that whole land speaking about? The whole land is speaking about Babylon the Great. All right. Which is prophesied up and down throughout the scriptures. Uh, predominantly Revelation 18. Let me just get that real quick. Because, you know, money is not going to be matter. And people going to be using their dollar bills to wipe their asses with. To be frank. To be plain, man. This is Revelation 18 and 10 standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city 
for in one hour is thy judgment come. All right, so in one hour is uh, America going to be destroyed. That's what it said uh, in Zephaniah, the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. All right, by 200 million thermonuclear ICBM missiles that are going to annihilate America. Okay, uh, verse Revelation 18 and 19. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For one hour is she made desolate. All right. So one hour, America is going to be destroyed off the face of the earth, man, for all of the wickedness that it's done. All of the false propaganda enslaving the nation of Israel, trying to slaughter off uh, the uh, tribes of Gad, enslaving the tribes of Judah, uh, putting through hardcore bondage the, uh, the northern kingdom. All right. Uh, so it says, for he shall make even a speedy riddance. Of all them that dwell in the land. All right. The Lord said a speedy witness, man. It's going to be a quick destruction. That's that. That's that one hour that I was just speaking of, man. One hour uh, shall the Lord bring in judgment unto Babylon the Great. So it took all of these centuries to build up this place. But he's going to destroy it within 60 minutes. All right. By way of thermonuclear missiles. Okay. This is uh, 2 Peter 3 and 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. All right, so uh, the heavens and the earth, this place, America, is going to be burnt up, man. The elements uh, with fervent heat. Okay, and so once you realize that that is going to happen according to biblical prophecy, you're going to understand that these, these dollar bills can't save you. Because only Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai can save you. Not money, not uh, a lifestyle that you thought you could live. You know, because uh, the the nation of Edom think that money can deliver them from everything, man. All right, and it cannot. It will. It will not in that day. Okay. This is uh this is and this is what the things that the, right now they've they put Americans in the state of realizing thinking. That their money shall deliver them. Their money shall uh, be able to help them get out of any situation. They're, these people are born with silver spoons in their mouths. All right. But this is how you're supposed to live. This is First Timothy 6 and 7. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Okay. So you're supposed to be content with these things. With food, clothing, shelter. You're supposed to be content with those things. But since they've lived the lifestyle of wanting money, of having to take hold on money, they, they think that that's going to be able to deliver them when uh, everything goes awry, when martial law and the, the government, the uh, military takes over. But it's not going to happen that way. It says, uh, but they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. That's, that's going to drown them in destruction and perdition, thinking they're going to be saved by the way of their costliness. All right. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So many men who are taking this money for filthy lucre's sake, they're going to be pierced through with many sorrows, man. You know, because they have that love of money. Their love of money has shown it's not profitable unto the nation of Israel, not to the world at all, man. The Lord is going to give... His men, true riches in, uh, in, in the kingdom to come, in the kingdom to come, man. Not this fiat money and this gold and this silver are, are going to be destroyed because the true gold and the silver are the nation of Israel. Uh, the ones that the Lord has ordained and chosen to be his elect. All right. Because he said we are his goodly, uh, goodly things that they took away and stowed away in their temples. OK. And does he not in Isaiah, the 14, 13 chapter, he calls uh, a man, a golden wedge of Ophir. OK, that's a, a valuable man is going to be oh, Isaiah 13 and 12. I'll make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man that the golden wedge of Ophir. So with that, just know that you're not going to be delivered in the day of the Lord's judgment, man. All right. Now with your gold and your silver to you, I say.